Welcome to the night section. Why Russ will die as a legend. Before you dislike this video or say what the hell are you actually talking about, let me explain. In the words of the great William Shakespeare, in time we hate that which we often fear. I guess the question to ask ourselves is, do we really hate Russ? Is Russ doing something to actually warrant this vast amount of hatred? Or is what he represents something we just might fear? that may trigger these negative reactions. I might be a little late to the party, but I thought this would be something interesting to talk about. I think Russ's relevancy has lasted long enough for us to delve into this discussion. And of course, I welcome you guys to leave comments below and what you might think it really is, true hatred or fear. And now some of you guys may be confused as to what I'm referring to. So to give you guys a brief background, Russ is an American songwriter, rapper, musician, producer, engineer, author, teacher, astronaut, chef, inventor, gambler, athlete. If you didn't get the joke, it's to say that he does a lot of things and he does it on his own. Before blowing up as big as he did independently, he was grinding. From 2011 to 2014, Russ released 11 albums and 87 consecutive singles. A moment of silence, please. Let me say that again, 11 albums and 87 singles. That is a lot of music. More than your friend who's a rapper can even fathom to write. On top of that, to do the vocals, produce, mix, and engineer most of your tracks, if not all, someone please give Russ a medal. Because that's more than the majority of artists have done in their entire career, let alone in their early beginnings. But despite the sheer volume of music, he got barely any traction. So he then recouped, recalculated, and recalibrated and found that the solution was not hefty projects. So instead, he decided to release a single a week on SoundCloud for almost three years straight. Two of these songs being What They Want and Losing Control that hit the Billboard Hot 100 charts. And a minority of you might be wondering, okay, sounds cool. It sounds like he just grinded his way to the top, you know, with no cosigns, just genuine work ethic and volume of music that eventually people gravitated to. Why would someone hate him for that? So now this is where the controversy comes in after he blew up. In the beginning, you know, everything was fine and dandy. He even appeared on platforms for interviews like Vlad TV, Hot 97, Rap Radar, the typical, you know, new kid on the block, we want to get to know you type of ordeal. Yes, in his interviews, he was a little brash and to the point. Uh, I be just shitting on these people so much. Speaking on certain matters, specifically the music industry, which did cause him to get some flack with people calling him arrogant or mad at the fact that he's making it seem like he's just the best and better than everyone, which I personally don't agree he intended to, but people feel how they feel nonetheless. But where people really decide to hate on him was after September 2017, when he made a post on the socials captioned after show message. And where we see him in a t-shirt saying, quote, how much Zans and lean do you have to do before you realize you're an effing loser? Many people understood the sentiment, while others responded in a not so positive way. As the late Fredo Santana, rest in peace, replied, quote, until I can stop thinking about my dead homies and the trauma that I've been through in my life, that's when I'll stop. The wound flared up again later in November 2017 when it was reported that Lil Peep had passed away and now Russ again took the opportunity to lecture the public in tweets like, quote, abusing Xanax and other pills, drugs, etc. in private because you're depressed or other mental health issues is one thing. Constantly recording yourself doing drugs and putting up pics and videos of doing it is when you start choosing to publicly glorify it and make it an image. And quote, I don't have a difficult time finding the correlation between being depressed and abusing drugs. I do, however, find it difficult to find the correlation between depression and publicly promoting your drug use over and over again via pics or vids. I could be wrong, but that discussion should be had. So we can argue that the sentiment was well-intentioned, but the timing, 
I don't know, feels a little shaky to me, at least the second time around, talking about drug use right after someone's death. Timing was definitely off, but he definitely had to pay for it, as it was F. Russ ever since. So I covered the reason why most people don't like him, or why he has a bad rep, but the main reason and purpose of this video is to let you guys know why I think Russ will die as a legend. Now let's talk about everything he has done right. Earlier, I mentioned how Russ really started to get poppin' when he started releasing a song a week on SoundCloud, and that was unheard of by anybody before him. Artists like Jesse Reyes have called it the Russ mentality. To do it. Like, you know, now you guys have so much luxury. It, it can be an album, it can be a project, there's all these different names for this shit. It's all the same shit, like, you could be a single, one-off, you can do a whole thing like called like, okay, let's drop this out tomorrow. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, on, but honestly, you have to understand, I really believe that. Yeah. This is what I believe. Like if you and I, like if we were brother and sister, and we were like fucking ghettoed out, like didn't know anybody, didn't have all these good people around us, I'd be like, listen to me, sis. Like, fucking, let's just put out a song every day. We'll, and with our 87 followers on Instagram, all you need is, the people don't get it. All right, the rest mentality. Russ. Russ did that. Yeah. I believe in that. Yeah. That's why I fuck with Russ. I think that's right. Yeah. And comedian Andrew Schultz actually credited Russ for the inspiration to post consistently. Basically, you've been, um, I, I owe a lot of my success to, to you. And I was telling you this before. And, um, yeah, you really inspired me to put Thank out the you. content. And it's and it's weird how it happens because I get a lot of credit in the comedy world, uh, you know, like taking comedy from TV to the internet. And I always say, I just took it from musicians. Yeah. Whatever musicians were doing, they're 20 years ahead of comics. Right. right? And Interesting. You specifically with releasing a song, I thought you did it for a year. Yeah, I know you did no, it for it was, two years. Yeah, like two and a half. It was a long time. You did a song a week. Yeah. Which in turn led his Instagram following to grow significantly. Russ literally gave us the blueprint on how to blow up, which is volume, volume, volume. I don't know any other artist who just straight up said, I made a lot of music and that's how I blew up. Not to mention him traveling to Europe on his first tour, letting us know that there are international markets, not just in the Americas. He completely debunked the idea that you have to blow up in your hometown to make it. Every other artist that I know of has only given us the runaround on how they became successful, being very indirect on their process. Russ has the mentality that anybody can get it and I want everyone to get it. So I'll be as open and transparent as I can, which I personally respect very much. Russ is also constantly giving game in his interviews. Well, if you don't mind sharing, what was your strategy from going from like zero followers on social media to getting to like 900, 6,000 on over? If you don't mind sharing. Yeah, it was literally put out as much shit as possible at a high level, like quality and quantity. They always said, oh, you have to pick uh, quality over quantity. I was like, why can't you just do both? Why can't you have high quality and high quantity? And that's kind of what broke the fucking system. That's what did it is that, you know, it, the first song I put out didn't get a million plays in the first day. The second song didn't either. The 50th one didn't either. But on the 98th one, it did. You know what I'm saying? Was it actually so, 98 or are you just kind of spitballing numbers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think it's 98, 99, some shit like that. But uh, content is key. Just put out a shit ton of shit. It just has to be good. Once you look past the bravado, you can really understand why he says what he says and why he feels the way that he does. He constantly talks about his come up, really being open about the way that he got to where he is now. He talks candidly about the law of attraction, having read books like The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho, The Magic Ladder to Success by Napoleon Hill, just to name a few. Not many artists, at least right now, really talk about the power of will and the power of visualization when it comes to making your dreams a reality. The law of attraction is a very, very real thing. And I'm glad that Russ has been using his platform to speak on it. Most importantly, he preaches the message to bet on yourself. He didn't have a cosign. He owns all his masters. He engineers, mixes, arranges, and writes the majority of his songs and has for the majority of his career, at least until he really started to blow up. That's the only time he really started working with producers outside of himself. Let's not forget that he exposes the industry for what it really is instead of what has been portrayed to us because he has no strings behind his back and doesn't owe his loyalty to any corporation. He built his fan base from the ground up and only answers to them. 
he didn't just move to LA to hang and chill with other celebrities. He stayed close to his roots in Atlanta. And even if Russ doesn't get another hit single, or if his fan base just somehow disintegrates, he will be a legend in my books. Being a legend to me means you live in your truth and walk your own path in life no matter how much you're ridiculed or hated. And that's what Russ has proven to be, a legend. So ask yourselves again, is it really hatred or is it fear? Does someone living in their likeness intimidate you? And if it does, how can we address this? Thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to subscribe. Don't hesitate to comment and engage about anything you like throughout this video as well. Please leave a like. It really does help and hit the bell notification if you do want to see more. Night section.